time has come. For 300 years, we prepared, we grew stronger. While you rested in your cradle of power. So, Battlefield 2042 looks pretty good. I'm kind of excited for it. I think it looks like a fun game. It's definitely a step up from Battlefield 5 for a lot of reasons, particularly the way it's being marketed, which a couple of people have already spoken about. It seems like it seems like a lot of the woke nonsense that was in Battlefield 5 isn't in this one. Cuz if you remember right at the start of the Battlefield 5 trailer, or the premiere, or whatever that disastrous like first showing was for that game where they showed that that strong whammon with the hook arm pick up that guy or whatever it was. It's like, what, what are you doing? First of all, this World War II. Why is this hook arm lady like running around in the first place? He's supposed to be realistic, but they didn't care. In fact, they doubled down on all of it, put her on the box, all kinds of stuff for a World War II game. And they would say, what? You didn't know that there were women in World War II? Oh, you mean like the couple resistance fighters in France? <laughs> okay, sure. It was it was widespread. They were on the front lines. They were the front. They were on the front lines the whole way. It got bad. The backlash for this was huge, and uh, EA's EA's uh, executives, the CCO Patrick Soderlund, comes out and says, "Well, if you don't like it." Don't buy it. Well, people people took him up on that offer, <laughs> and the game sold terribly. It sold really bad. In fact, I remember that the game dropped down to 30 bucks after like two or three weeks, which for a new game like this is unprecedented. You 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 never see that unless a game is really selling bad. And, you know, they, they tried to blame all kinds of stuff. Like they tried to say it was a mess, but reality is a lot of people took him up on his offer <laughs> is what happened. Uh, they even doubled down on it. Uh, EA and the backlash against women in Battlefield 5 accept it or don't buy the game. When people play a World War II game, it's, it's a little bit different. Okay, World War I, World War II, people expect a little bit of realism. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. If they had just put female characters in the game and not made a big deal about it, I really think that it would have probably blown over. I do. Uh, but they didn't. In fact, they they got mad about it, and they decided to push it in people's faces and make a huge deal about it, and people stopped buying the game. They, they made a huge, big, woke deal about it. They tried to, to back away from this because if you go and you play Battlefield Five now, and if you have the consoles, if you have like a PS4 or 5 or an Xbox One or an Xbox Series S or X, I believe they're, it's free right now. It's at least free on, I think, the EA Pass. So if you have the game EA Pass on Xbox, you can get it. And then I think it was free with PlayStation Plus last month. So if you, pack, if you manage to pick that up or you to pick it up now, when you load the game, it's like a dude <laughs> coming off of the beach of the of the beachfront going into war like it's it's a guy <laughs> they've tried to backstep on this and walk it back but the damage was done but after watching the battlefield 2042 trailer it kind of seems like they're walking it back and they kind of just want to give you a product uh will host 128 player combat on pc next gen consoles i think that that's great uh battlefield 2042 won't have a battle royale mode I think that that's great. I hate Battle Royale. But this is what really struck my eye and made me want to talk and, and bring all of this back up. This is from IGN, and then there was another website that talked about it as well. IGN, of course, not liking this. Uh, Battlefield 2042 developer says climate apocalypse is for gameplay reasons, not social commentary. Well, what is going on here? Well, in the, in the trailer, if you were paying attention, there were a lot of locations that were kind of torn up from climate change. And you have like an Antarctic area that's ravaged by the oil industry and stuff like that. Um, a lot of climate displacement. A lot of, there's like a refugee thing going on. 
You say, what does this matter? There's no campaign in the game. <laughs> There's no campaign. Uh, I'm not going to play. I, I have not liked any of the Battlefield campaigns, and I don't like Call of Duty campaigns either. It's all about the multiplayer for me in these games. Uh, you might think differently, and that's fine. We don't have to agree on everything. But the, the thing here that I like is how they're handling this. So they did this for gameplay reasons, and I don't think there's anything wrong with taking some inspiration or doing a little social commentary, as long as you do it right. But they're not doing any. They just say, well, we have this here for aesthetics and for gameplay reasons, which I would imagine are, are dynamics for the map like setting something off and maybe flooding the map or something. I think you could do some cool stuff with this. Uh, but apparently, you know, they're they're not going to push any so- social commentary, which I think is great. Because imagine if this had been Battlefield Five, <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, we're pushing it. Go get your electric car, pleb. And they're not doing that. And I think that that's great. Now, what's going to be funny is going to be the reaction. You already have IGN here saying that they should be doing some commentary, which clearly they don't want to. And I think that that's going to increase, especially as the climate stuff comes out, because you have to, you have to think about it this way. You have Kotaku polygon reset area era. They're going to see this, not social commentary. We're not trying to be political and they're going to jump in and they're going to, they're going to get pissed and, and cry and piss and moan that they're, not using their platform. How, how dare you want to deliver escapism? Listen to this. As I watched the reveal, it became impossible to ignore how many of 2042's themes are borrowing from explicit storylines that we're concurrently living through. The climate displacement era is already upon us. Tensions between global sovereignties are growing. And it's no longer difficult to imagine a lower Manhattan where the water comes up to your knees. DICE is presenting a stark, brutal interpretation of the Earth in the very new future where our ecological systems are pushed past the brink of unsustainable power structures. It's a foreboding, highly plausible dystopia. And that renders Battlefield 2042 into a political object, whether the company wants to admit it or not. <laughs> they don't. But why do they need to admit it? That's the thing. Why can't they just insert it here? But... That's the thing. It's all about insulting you. It's all about making it clear for you and pushing their politics. And I'm not here to argue about climate or anything. I'm not trying to have that conversation. What the conversation I want to have about 20 Battlefield 2042 is 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 the game fun. Okay? There's a time and place for these conversations. And we want to insert the aesthetic in there. As long as it's a fun game, I don't really care. But what I don't need is a bunch of preachy, preachy bullshit in the game that I'm trying to play. I'm trying to enjoy and play this game. I don't need preachy crap in my face. So IGN got a hold of a game design, the design director for Battlefield 2042, and they asked him this question. Is talking about depatriated people We're talking about citizens who've been displaced by climate change and war. Is there any sort of sensitivity towards these issues for you guys? Is there any social commentary anywhere with what you're trying to do? Or is this purely just a multiplayer game? And I like the answer that he gives right here. Berlin says, it is definitely purely a multiplayer game for us. The reason we decided to go down this route is so we could create a narrative with this world that we could create through the eyes of the no-pats, the in-universe term for the refugee warriors. We wanted to get more spectacle in there and more massive events happening. The se- ha- for more massive events happening. The setting fits that perfectly. It fits that scale, and it gives us reasons to go all over the world. It's for gameplay reasons across the board. Uh, the... This uh, refugee warriors thing here, that's the term they're giving it. The NOPATS is what they're giving it, the official name for it. Uh, This is IGN deciding that's what they're going to call them. Uh, They then go on to bitch and moan about Far Cry 6 and Ubisoft and how they don't really want to get political with that game. Seems like it's see they got this. Listen to this. It seems likely that EA believes by avoiding the P word, they are removing themselves from greater levels of critical and customer scrutiny. And then they get mad 
that they're not taking a stance, like just by this final paragraph here. By filtering climate Armageddon solely through, in Berlin's words, gameplay reasons, Dice has ironically one of the more trenchant political commentaries the crisis has entertained. We all know what's coming, but we dare not verbalize those who are responsible. I hope EA and the rest of the games industry changes its tone before it's too late. It's a, like it's going to make a difference whether or not whether or not Ethan Battlefield 2042 talks about it. Okay, the aesthetics there. If people want to know more, they can look it up themselves. They don't need a finger in their face 24-7, which is all IGN wants to do. This is why their website's dying, because they whine about shit like this when people just want to know about 2042 and if it's good or not, which I think it will be. So this is a nice change of pace for EA and Battlefield if you compare it to what came before. It seems that, you know, they've learned, hey, maybe we shouldn't insult the customer. Maybe we shouldn't get political. Maybe we should just deliver a fun, awesome game and people will buy it. Imagine that's crazy idea. I can't believe it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.